Hello networkers and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer where I will answer one of your questions. And this question comes from Fada Cartel and he asks, Good day fellow networkers. Currently I am in a ISP on the business side where we do Metro, Ethernet, Fiber Internet, Unified Communications and Wireless Configurations installs. However, I decided that I like voice as well as security. Which do you think would be the best choice for the future in terms of job security and salary? So the question is, voice engineer or security engineer? Let's talk about that. And that is a very easy answer, network security. And this is really for two primary reasons that I've seen in my professional career. The first one is the amount of jobs of companies wanting network security engineers. So I'm gonna put up some screenshots. And this is from LinkedIn's webpage, a recent search as of, I think like last night, when I was getting prepared for this video. And this is going to linkedin.com, going to the job section and doing a very simple search. So you can do the same thing. So the first one I listed was for a voice engineer, anything of that combination. And those results were around 5,000 for a voice engineer. And it's for various places across the United States, like there's one for Florida, one in Texas, uh, Kentucky, New York. So you get the idea. So it's a good number, 5,000 results across the US. That's pretty good. I also did a search for network voice engineer and look at that, the top one is from salesforce.com. It's a great company to work for. And you know, there's different combinations of that title, like network engineer voice for AT&T and other kind of collaboration, voice, LAN, unified communications. So those, um, those results gave about 3,000 across the US. So that's still pretty good. Now, what about network security? When I did a search for network security engineer, it gave a lot more results. 15,000 uh, available jobs for network security in Florida and Texas and so on. So there is definitely a large demand of companies wanting network security engineers for their organization. The main reason for this is pretty simple. Voice in the past five or six years have been pretty static. There really hasn't been any kind of major, you know, major developments in the voice side. Because most companies are either doing one of the following. They either have their own phone system um, in-house that has a PRI or a Septron, perhaps. Or some of them are, they have IP phones at their desk or a soft phone and they're using a cloud provider that is providing voice services. So their phones are connecting over the internet to a voice provider. And that's what they're doing there. Some smaller organizations and some mediums, which is kind of strange, but they're doing it. They're using their cell phones for communicating with their clients and their business partners. It's a lot cheaper for them. And they don't have to worry about the headache of managing phones and a phone system or a recurring calls for a PRI or a SIP trunk, and for additional licensing. But really in the last five or six years, there really hasn't been anything like major on the voice side. Place to receive phone calls. Yes, there's advanced features, but most companies are not using those features on some of these advanced systems like the Cisco Unified Communication Manager system. They have a lot of new features that they add, but it's just a little bit features that they add. Not that much. So really in most cases, a lot of the server administrators, they're kind of managing the voice systems now. The network engineers, we're not really doing that anymore. I mean, most of my jobs now, yes, I deploy phone systems for companies, but the day-to-day -day end, you know, like do, doing changes of the phones or moving phones, the sys admins or the desktop technicians do all of that. I rarely touch any environments unless there's a problem or if they want to do an upgrade, which likely happens. So when it comes to voice, it's very, very static and it's very slow. So the demand for that, which makes sense, really isn't there. 
Now, when it comes to network security, that is completely different because that is a number one priority for any organization. Because when, a, when your network is compromised, it can be compromised in three different ways. One, it could be affecting the availability of your services that you're providing to your customers. So for example, a hacker could be trying to affect the availability of Amazon.com. So they would do some kind of a DOS attack or some kind of a threat, find some exploits to bring the services for Amazon.com offline. So as a result, you and I, we can't go to Amazon.com to do any kind of purchases. So that will affect our business. So that's the first one is availability. The second one is with data loss. And that could be a hack or an exploit that could go into your environment and actually delete your files, your critical files. Now that one has a pretty easy mitigation and that is backups. A lot of companies, small, medium, and large, they do constant backups of their critical servers. So yes, their data may be deleted, but they can easily do a restore. So there is some mitigation about that, but it's still something that is very, very important to an organization. And the third one is the leaking of data, where a hack could go ahead, a hack could go into your network and get your critical files that are probably very important to your business, have information about your clients, your client details, and that could be exploited on the internet. And these are people like uh, Snowden, um, that's probably a good example of that, or Aaron Schwartz, I think, if I pronounce his name correctly though. So those are examples where a hack could, um, where that could be something that a hack actually does. So those are three big components of how your network could be compromised and could affect your business drastically. That's why having network security is critical, it's very critical. And that's why they have next, next generation firewalls or current generation firewalls because they've been out for such a long time. And these next generation firewalls are doing all type of detail inspection, application filtering, micro application filtering. They have IPS services. There is encryption type services. There is antivirus. Um, there is um, filtering of websites and so on. That is very, very critical. There's even endpoint control where security can be pushed down to the switch port of the client computers that can authenticate them to make sure that, you know, who, you know, say who they are and give them particular rights for what they can truly access. Security is very important to ensure the la to ensure that data loss doesn't happen, that the availability of the network can continue to happen and that data itself cannot be leaked. These are the main components that companies want because that could, because that could make or break an organization. Furthermore, when it comes to voice and security, I see the trends on our own personal website on roadhub.net. There has been such a huge interest of people wanting network security training. So our Palo Alto training package, our FortiGate package, SonicWall, Juniper Firewalls, Cisco TrustSec, these are the major selling points on our website because they are implementing security to try to mitigate against those three um, threats that I talked about, availability, data loss, and data leakage. When it comes to voice, people do purchase the voice, but not at the rate compared to network security. And we are finished with this episode. So thank you very much for the great question and I would recommend network security if that is something that you are truly interested in. And I wanna hear from you guys. So please post your questions in the comments below about anything in the networking field or being a network engineer and your question will come up in a future episode. So thank you for watching this video. Please like this video, please subscribe to our channel. That would mean a lot. And also check out our training website at roadhub.net and support us there. That would also mean a lot and support practical training that we provide. So once again, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.